your basic aim has been to take uh, Palestinian graduates or professionals, as we said, and put them into jobs in the Israeli tech sector. In, in the first instance, how have you been impacted by the weekend's attack and your ability to do that? Okay. Well, the first thing, the first thing I want to say just before we get into those specifics is, uh, you know, I think like every Israeli, I've been uh, very impacted by what's uh, happened here since uh, Shabbat morning, since Saturday morning. And it's been an absolutely terrible time here. Um, as you know, 1,200 people killed, many, most of them civilians, uh, terrible atrocities committed, hostage, uh, many hostages taken, and just absolute uh, atrocities uh, committed. So it's very hard to, to focus, about, uh, focus on other things. Um, but as far as the impact, uh, look, I believe that we still need to try to build a better future here, and that by definition, uh, will involve Israelis and Palestinians working together. Uh, we both live in this uh, this part of the world. Neither of us is going anywhere. And we have to choose. Do we want a future like the past has been, including the events of the last weekend? Uh, or do we want to try to create something better? So in the immediate term, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult uh, to advance programs that uh, have Israelis and Palestinians working together. For one thing, Israelis uh, in the tech sector, which is where I've been working, um, many of them have been called up to reserve duty. Uh, many of them are either zero or one degree of separation from someone who's been killed and are, are very focused on, uh, you know, unfortunately, burying the dead, uh, grieving for the dead, and uh, having to defend the country. Uh, so that's obviously job, uh, job one for everyone. Um, secondly, I think it's important uh, for us to uh, distinguish between the West Bank and Gaza. Um, the problems of this past weekend have been uh, from Gaza, and uh, that's, it's going to be even more difficult uh, than it has been until now to do any business between or do anything constructive between Israel and Gaza. That's going to take a while right now, uh, as it rightly should. Um, with the West Bank, however, I think things can be different. Uh, the West Bank has been, for the most part, uh, quiet during this, uh, this most recent turn of events. Obviously, there's no love lost between the PA and Hamas, so maybe it's not surprising. The things I've been doing have been focused on working with Palestinians from the West Bank and East Jerusalem uh, to give them opportunities and to give them opportunities in the Israel tech sector because uh, there's really nowhere else for them to get those opportunities. And uh, I'm happy to talk more about the programs, but, uh, sure. you know, so, so I think it's important to distinguish between the immediate term and uh, the somewhat longer term. And, of course, that depends uh, greatly on whether this uh, conflict remains limited to uh, the events of these past few days, the terrible events of these past few days, or whether it escalates to involve a, a broader regional war. And then, you know, all bets are off. Uh, yeah, Dean, 24 hours ago, we were joined by... Um, somebody called Mahmoud Kwais. He's the CEO of a company called Tech Clinic based in East Jerusalem. But what he told us was that while he had operations in Jerusalem and Ramallah, he did have a number of staff working from home uh, in the Gaza Strip. And he was explaining to us how they were impacted um, in their ability to do their day job. I, I, I just put that to you so that I can ask about the talent pools, the Palestinian technology talent pools that you work with, principally where do they come from and in what kind of roles are you placing them into? Okay, so um, again, let's distinguish between uh, the West Bank and East Jerusalem on the one hand and Gaza on the other hand. Uh, look, the, the Palestinian tech sector is still very, very small. Uh, it's bigger and uh, more advanced than it was when I, I and others started working on this, uh, you know, 15 years ago or so. But it's still very small. You can't you can't think of it in terms of the Israeli startup nation, which is, you know, one of the leading tech centers in the world. However, um, there are some young, for the most part, very talented, ambitious, and uh, exceptional Palestinian tech entrepreneurs. Um, again, my experience is mainly with people in, in the West Bank, and I think it's extremely important for all of us, for Palestinians as well as for Israelis, that we encourage those, uh, those few entrepreneurs uh, so that they'll set an example and be able to employ other Palestinians 
and uh, show the way for other young Palestinians to go into tech entrepreneurship, which has transformed Israel. And I believe that it can perhaps similarly transform the Palestinian economy. Um, so we have to give them the tools and the programs I've started are, are aimed at uh, giving young Palestinians the tools and the experience and the networks uh, and the know-how to go back and build up a, a robust Palestinian tech sector, which can help drive the economy there and I think change the region, help change the region for all of us. Uh, we do that through the internship program, which, by the way, is not aimed at bringing Palestinians to come work long term at companies in Israel. The idea is to bring them for a short period, typically three months. Very often they're asked to stay on for an additional period uh, and then give them those tools with which they can go back and help build the, uh, the Palestinian economy. As far as Gaza is concerned, you know, it's, it's I mean, one's heart is broken here for, for many reasons. Uh, but two months ago, we had a, a networking event. We do this once a year for the internship program that I started. Uh, and we bring together many of the Palestinians who've been interns, who've been in our internship program, who've been in the mentorship program, and we meet them up with many Israelis from the tech sector here. And it is just an incredibly heartwarming experience every time we do it. Uh, as I said, we did it two months ago, almost to the day, uh, August 8th. And there were about 100 Palestinians from the West Bank and East Jerusalem who came. Uh, there were almost an equal number of Israeli tech folks, and there were four young Gazan uh, tech entrepreneurs who managed to get permits to come to Herzliya and participate in this event. And, you know, these are the kind of people that need to uh, be given tools to, uh, as I say, to develop their own economy for the benefit of all of us. Now, I obviously am, am pained to think about um, you know, the prospects of those young Palestinian, of those young Gazans uh, today, given what's going on, I'm sure they will not be having an easy time of it. Uh, but, you know, I think we need to ask where, where, where one needs to look to, to place the blame for that unfortunate situation uh, in the immediate term.